All right, our next topic on atomic structure is radioactivity. Atoms that are radioactive have unstable nuclei. To form more stable nuclei, they need to emit radiation. Radioactive decay refers to this process of unstable nuclei emitting radiation to form more stable nuclei. For LAMCAT, there are three types of radiation you're going to want to know about, alpha, beta, and gamma. Let's start off with alpha decay. In alpha decay, the nucleus emits an alpha particle, which consists of two protons and two neutrons. You'll notice that this is the same as a helium nucleus, which is why people often say in alpha decay, you emit a helium nucleus. Now, since you're changing the number of protons and neutrons, this is certainly going to affect the mass number and the atomic number. And we can actually see that the mass number is going to decrease by four, and your atomic number is going to decrease by two. Now, this is actually a pretty substantial change in the mass, which is why alpha decay in general only occurs with very large nuclei, nuclei with very large masses. So for example, we can take a look at 226 radium undergoing alpha decay. In undergoing alpha decay, it's going to form 222 radon and an alpha particle. You can see here that we're denoting the alpha particle with a mass number of 4 and atomic number of 2, which matches the description. You can also see that we're going from radium to radon. That's a change in the identity of the element, and that should also not be a surprise because our atomic number is decreasing from 88 to 86. And you'll recall we said that the identity of an element depends on the atomic number. So if the atomic number changes, the element must also change. All right. Now, another thing I want to mention, which is important in general for all nuclear reactions, and that is the mass number and the atomic number must always be balanced on both sides. So you can see here that the mass number on the left, we've got 226. This has to be equal to 222 plus 4 on the right side. The same is for the atomic number. You can see 88 is equal to 86 plus two. All right, so that's alpha decay. Let's now go ahead and move on to beta decay. Beta decay is a bit more complicated than alpha decay because there are three different types. We'll start off with beta minus decay, which is also called electron emission. Based off its name, you know that the nucleus is going to be emitting an electron. However, what's interesting is if you think about it, we said before that nuclei have protons and neutrons, and we didn't say there were any electrons there. So where is that electron coming from? Well, the nucleus is actually doing a very interesting process where it takes a neutron and it's converting it into a proton and an electron. And that works because the neutron has no charge, it's neutral, and if you add up the charges of what we're forming, we also end up with no charge. In this process, when the neutron gets converted, the proton, the nucleus, is actually going to keep and the electron, it's actually going to emit. So the overall process can really just be thought of as the nucleus is converting a neutron into a proton. Now, neutrons and protons have about the same mass. So the ending result, at least from the mass number, is that it stays the same. It doesn't change. For the atomic number, we are gaining a proton. So our atomic number is going to increase by one. And if you think about it, the type of nuclei that are going to be doing beta minus decay, where you're converting neutrons to protons, are nuclei with too many neutrons. Or in other words, atoms with a high neutron to proton ratio. We can take a look at an example where we've got 131 iodine, and 131 iodine will undergo beta minus decay to form 131 xenon as well as an electron. You can see in our notation for the electron, we've got a mass number of zero, which makes sense, but the atomic number is minus one. There's no such thing as a negative number of protons. So you should understand that this minus one is there just for balancing purposes. That the mass number, we've got 131 is equal to 131 plus zero, and atomic number 53 is equal to 54 plus negative one. 
that works. The last thing I want to mention, of course, is again, the identity of our element changed because our atomic number increased from 53 to 54. Okay, that's our first type of beta decay. Let's take a look at the second type, which is beta positive decay, also called positron emission. Again, based off the name, you know that the nucleus is going to be emitting a positron. And once again, we said the nucleus has protons and neutrons. There is no positrons. Also, what is a positron? So a positron, you're going to see, has a mass of about 0 AMU and a charge of plus 1. You're going to see that the lack of mass makes it similar to an electron, but its charge is different. So the easiest way for you to think about a positron is that it's simply an electron with a positive charge. So where does it come from? Well, the nucleus, once again, is going to do an interesting process, except this time it's going to start off with a proton, which is going to split into a neutron as well as a positron. The neutron it's going to go ahead and keep, and the positron it's going to go ahead and emit. So the ending result, we're converting a proton to a neutron, so our mass number, again, is going to stay the same, and our atomic number is going to decrease by one, and that's because we're losing a proton when we convert it into a neutron. And if we're converting protons into neutrons, this is the opposite situation as beta minus decay. This is a nucleus with too many protons, or nuclei with a low neutron-to-proton ratio. All right. We'll look at an example down here. We've got 23 magnesium, which can undergo beta minus decay, or sorry, beta positive decay, to form 2311 sodium, uh, as well as a positron. So you can see, again, for our notation for the positron, it's interesting because the mass number is zero, but the atomic number is one. Even though the atomic number of, is one, it does not mean that we have a proton there. It's still a positron, and we know that because the mass number is zero. The one is there, once again, just for balancing purposes. So we can see the mass numbers are equal on both sides, and the atomic numbers are also equal on both sides. All right. So now let's take a look at our third type of beta K, which is electron capture. Again, based off the name, you can figure out that here, the nucleus is going to capture or absorb an electron. And what the nucleus is going to do with the electron is it's going to combine it with a proton to form a neutron that it's going to keep. So the electron is absorbed, the neutron you keep. So this process actually ends up being very similar to beta positive decay or positron emission because in both of these processes, you're converting a proton into a neutron. So you're going to get the same result that the mass number is going to go ahead and stay the same and our atomic number is going to decrease by one when we lose a proton. And the way for you to think about electron capture for the MCAT is it's really just an alternative way for a nucleus to convert a proton into a neutron. All right. So same thing. It's going to happen for atoms with too few pro uh, neutrons and too many protons, so a low neutron to proton ratio. And we can draw an example again with 23 magnesium where you combine it with an electron to form 23 sodium. Again, mass numbers and atomic numbers are equal on both sides. All right. So finally, let's take a look at our last type of radiation, which is gamma decay. In gamma decay, the nucleus emits a gamma ray. You'll recall that among the electromagnetic spectrum, all the different colors of light, that gamma rays have the highest frequency and the highest energy. That's why gamma radiation is very dangerous. At the same time, since you're only emitting pure energy, you're not emitting any particles at all, so that means that the mass number is not going to change, and the atomic number is also not going to change. So nuclei that undergo gamma decay are nuclei in an excited state, nuclei with a lot of energy. 
And here we've got an example with 125 iodine where we have this asterisk here to denote that this is a nucleus in its excited state. And when it undergoes gamma decay, you're going to end up with the same exact atom, also 125 iodine, except now you don't have the asterisk, so it's no longer in its excited state because it's emitted a gamma ray, which has a mass number and atomic number of zero. And finally, again, the mass numbers, atomic numbers are the same on both sides. All right. So those are the different types of radiation on the MCAT. I know it was a lot, but on the MCAT, a common question with radiation is, they'll present to you a nuclear reaction and ask you, what kind of decay is this? And answering these questions aren't too tough, but you do have to be able to recognize the difference between the different types of nuclear decay.